Okay, well, welcome. Um, I first heard about Pecha Kucha several years ago from um, colleagues in art and architecture. It was developed to combat the occasionally onerous quality of PowerPoint presentations. Um, the rules are simple. Each speaker um, gets to present 20 slides, and each slide is projected for 20 seconds. And when one speaker is done, there's a 40 second pause, and then the next speaker begins. So the slides roll on no matter what. <laughs> and uh, the next speaker comes up uh, 40 seconds after the last one finishes. So there's a little bit of room for applause, but please save your questions <laughs> or comments <laughs> for uh, the reception, which will be after the last talk. Um, so, uh, as, I, as you can imagine, I thought it would be an interesting to try this presentation met methodology as an experiment in mathematics, um, but that experiment became a reality only through the tremendous energy and enthusiasm of Sarah Cook. Um, so I'd like to begin by thanking her and our other presenters, uh, Dick Gross, Emily Real, Barry Mazur and Oliver Knill uh, for agreeing to participate in this experiment. Um, and I'll, I'll give the last presentation myself. So um, without further ado, let's welcome our first speaker, Sarah Cook. Thank you. Are we ready to go? Here it is. Well, thank you very much for coming. Today I'm going to tell you about a way to take two complex polynomials and combine them together to build a rational map through a procedure known as mating the polynomials. We'll start with a, comp with a polynomial mapping the complex plane to itself. Associated to iterating this polynomial is a compact set called the Phil Julia set of the polynomial. By definition, this consists of all points that do not escape off to infinity under iteration. In black here, you see the Phil Julia set of the map z gives z squared. It's the closed unit disk. In green, you see the basin of infinity. This is the set of all points that does escape off to infinity under iteration. For this Pecha Kucha, I'll be focused on quadratic polynomials. On the next slide, you see a gallery of Phil Julia sets for a bunch of quadratic polynomials. Every quadratic polynomial has a unique critical point. The critical point here is in the center for each one of these pictures. Here, the critical point maps over here. That point maps back. This critical point is in a cycle of period two. Here, the critical point is in a cycle of period three. Here, in the complex conjugate of this picture, the critical point is in a cycle of period three. Here, it's in a cycle of period four. And here, it eventually maps into a cycle of period two. Each of these polynomials has the property that the critical point is eventually periodic, i.e., all of these polynomials are post-critically finite. The forward orbit of the critical point is finite. These characters will show up later in this Pecha Kucha. They have funny names that have to do with their shapes. This is the basilica polynomial, this is the rabbit, this is the co-rabbit, this is a dendrite, <laughs> this dendrite, the Phil Julia set has no interior, and this is Coco Pelli, named by John Milner, who thinks that these two shapes look the same, but he's a topologist. Here in the middle, <laughs> you see the parameter space for the family z maps to z squared plus c. In black is the Mandelbrot set, which consists of all parameters c for which the Phil Julia set is connected. The basilica parameter is here, the rabbit lives there, the co-rabbit lives there, Coco Pelli and the dendrite, this dendrite, live up here. Here is our model map, z gives z squared. There's a conformal isomorphism, which maps this green region over to this green region for the basilica polynomial. That conformal isomorphism actually conjugates the map z gives z squared to the basilica polynomial on the green regions. That's very useful because anything that's dynamically meaningful over here can be transported. For instance, polar coordinates interact very nicely with the map z gives z squared. The ray at angle theta maps to the ray at angle 2 theta. The landing point or the tip of this ray will map to the tip of this ray. The ray at angle 0 is fixed by z gives z squared. We can take this checkerboard pattern and transport it over here to this more complicated picture. The ray at angle theta will map to the ray at angle 2 theta. The tip of this ray will map to the tip of this ray under the basilica polynomial. The zero ray is right here and will end at a fixed point for the basilica polynomial. Similarly, the ray at angle zero for the rabbit is right here. It will end at the tip of the rabbit's toe, a fixed point. Now I'm going to tell you about a way how to take these two checkerboard patterns for the basilica and the rabbit 
and build a map on a topological two-sphere. Here's my topological two-sphere. What I'm going to do is transform a copy of the complex plane over here by the basilica polynomial, a copy of the complex plane over here by the rabbit, choose a homeomorphism mapping this complex plane to the northern hemisphere of the topological two-sphere, a homeomorphism mapping this complex plane to the southern hemisphere of the topological two-sphere, and I'm doing that in such a way that the ray at angle theta for the basilica polynomial lines up with the ray at angle minus theta for the rabbit polynomial. So I have a topological two-sphere wearing two copies of the complex plane. One is being transformed by the basilica here. One is being transformed by the rabbit here. And the map will actually extend continuously across the equator like z gives z squared. Now I'm going to collapse this region in the middle. I'm going to collapse this thing down by forming a quotient. All of the points that are in one ray are going to get collapsed down to just a single point under this quotient operation. And I can ask, is this quotient actually homeomorphic to a two-sphere? If yes, is the induced map on the quotient actually conjugate topologically to a rational map on the Riemann sphere? If the answer is yes, then this rational map is called a mating of the two polynomials. It'll be a rational map of degree two. Here's an animation of that squishing procedure, that ray squishing, for the rabbit and the basilica polynomial. This gray region in between is being collapsed down, and the Julia sets are being drawn together. And in fact, they fit nicely together, and this last picture is a dynamical picture for rational map of degree two. The rabbit and the basilica can be mated. Here's the mating of two rabbits, which you might see in biology class or in Pecha Kucha. This region in between is being collapsed down. You're forming this ray squishing operation. You're forming this quotient. It exists. And you can mate two rabbits. You get a rational map of degree two, and there it is. <laughs> in this next <coughs> movie, we're mating two dendrites. You can see this equator under this squishing procedure, what happens to it. These Julia sets are coming together. In this squishing procedure, the quotient will be a sphere, and the induced map on the quotient is topologically conjugate to a rational map of degree two. That rational map of degree two has a Julia set that's the whole Riemann sphere. Now we're trying to mate two basilicas together. This region in between is being collapsed down, but the movie looks a little bit different from the previous ones that we've seen. In fact, the Julia sets don't fit together. They crash into each other, and there's a topological obstruction to this mating. This mating doesn't exist. In fact, some weird things can happen, like in the next example. <laughs> one of the Julia sets might eat the other one. <laughs> this mating doesn't exist either. So this is a mating of the co-rabbit and cocopelli. It is obstructed. It's one of my favorites. So what is the answer? When can you mate two post-critically finite quadratic polynomials? The answer is in this picture and in this theorem. The theorem is that if you take two polynomials, z squared plus c1, z squared plus c2, post-critically finite, these polynomials are mateable if and only if c1 and c2 do not belong to conjugate limbs of the Mandelbrot set. What's a conjugate limb? What are limbs of the Mandelbrot set? Limbs of the Mandelbrot set are exactly these things that are growing off of this main cardioid. This is the limb that contains the basilica. This is the limb that contains the rabbit. This is the limb that contains the co-rabbit. You can mate a basilica and a rabbit because they don't come from conjugate limbs. You cannot mate a basilica with itself because it's in its conjugate limb. And that's it. Thank you.